The next thing you might run into when we're doing some naming are what are called polyatomic ions. Right, so now we're, we're getting into compounds that aren't binary, that they have more than two different elements. So we have ions, and remember an ion is something that has a charge. Right, so we have this group of atoms, for example, this one called carbonate, where we have a carbon connected to three oxygen, and overall they have a negative one charge. And you'll be provided with this list of uh, polyatomic ions and what charges they are, so you, can, uh, you don't have to memorize memorize these things. So let's uh, look at how that affects our naming, right? So if we have something like Na2CO3, the first thing to recognize is it's not binary, right? Because binary means two and we have one, two, three elements in this. So as soon as you see something with more than two, then you should, uh, or pardon me, more than two different elements, you should get your a uh, table of, of uh, polyatomic ions, and that should clue you in that you have an, a polyatomic ion in here. So the next step is to look at this compound and look at the first element, and here, is it a metal? Yes, it's a metal. It's a group 1A, so this is a metal that always forms the same charge, right? So we don't have to use Roman numerals to say how many we have, because we know it has a plus one charge, right? So. Uh, Sodium would keep its name, and then this polyatomic ion just has the name it has from the chart. So this would be sodium carbonate. Right? And so type one compounds are, are pretty straightforward as long as you recognize that they have a polyatomic ion attached to them and find it on the table. So let's look at a, a couple more examples. So if we see something like calcium carbonate as a name, right, the name carbonate should clue you in that you have a polyatomic ion there because it doesn't have the I-N-E ending that we would expect with a normal uh, anion, right? So if it was calcium chloride, the chlorine would change to I-D. So if you see the I-D ending, it's a little different than this eight ending. So if you see something ending in a name like that, H or Ite, then you probably should start thinking polyatomic ions. So when we see this, we would look and say, well, calcium is a, a metal that always forms a constant charge. So calcium has a plus two charge. And then we would look at our polyatomic ion table and find our carbonate ion to see what it looks like. And it's that ion that we just are looked at as a minus two charge. So one plus two charge cancels one minus two, so these go together one to one. So this would be the formula for a calcium carbonate. Right? And so these polyatomic ions will also get together and, and make uh, compounds with, with uh, metals that form variable charges. All right, so if we have something like this, Cu3PO4, two, then, then we would look at this and say, well, this is a, a metal. It's a metal that forms a variable charge. We have one, two, three different elements here, so we probably have a polyatomic ion. And if we go to our polyatomic ion table, we can find a PO4 and see that it has a three minus charge and it's called phosphate. So again, we have uh, that ATE ending on there, right? <clears throat> and remember with the metals of the variable charge, what we have to do is say what their charge is. So what we're gonna have to figure out is what is that charge on that copper cation that's gonna go with this phosphate polyatomic ion. All right, so we did need to determine what Roman numeral to stick in into this little box here. And again, the way to do that is to balance our charges, right? So we have, this tells us we have three coppers, right? We don't know what their charges are, and that's what we're trying to determine. And we have two phosphate polyatomic ions. 
of a negative six charge. And, and perhaps we haven't talked about this, but one of these brackets in the subscript of two, this tells us we have two of everything in the bracket. So we have two phosphate ions, right? So the subscript of three applies to what's right before it. So three copper atoms. And then this two applies to everything in the bracket. So two phosphate uh, polyatomic ions. Right? And so we have this negative six charge here and we have one, two, three copper. So if we take our negative, our six and divide it by three, it tells us that we need a two on each of these. So we have a plus two, a plus two, and a plus two, right? So two, four, six, we have a plus six balancing a minus six. So each of our copper then must have a plus two charge. And that's that's how we get that number to stick stick in there and complete the, the process. So we have copper two phosphate would be the, the correct name for that uh, compound that contains a polyatomic ion. Uh, the other thing that, that you'll probably eventually run into is uh, most of your polyatomic ions have a negative charge, but there's one that you'll run into that has a positive charge. All right, so if we see this NH4Cl, we're looking at this and saying, well, you know, this isn't binary because we have four different elements and this isn't a metal, right? But since we have more than two elements, we have a polyatomic ion in there. And if you look at your polyatomic ion table, you'll see that you have NH4 with a positive one charge, right? And that's called the uh, ammonium, ammonium uh, polyatomic ion, right? And so then we, to name it, we just stick that name in there, ammonium for the polyatomic ion. And then chlorine is gonna change its INE ending to IDE. So we end up with chloride. Ammonium chloride. All right, so that's the the polyatomic ion with a positive charge on your your table, and you that that may come up. Uh, do we go through all of them? Uh, right. Well, let's look at. Uh, I've lost track of what we've done. All right. So say we have the name calcium sulfate and we want to write out the formula for that. We see that we have a, a metal, a metal always forms a same charge. We have that ATE ending, right? So if it was just sulfur, it would be sulfide. So with that ATE ending, we should suspect we have a polyatomic ion. And when we go look at our table, we see that the name sulfate relates to this group SO4 with a two minus charge, right? And we know that calcium is here in group 2A, so it has a plus two charge, right? And so we have a plus two and a minus two, so those will go together one to one, and we'll just have a CA uh, SO4. All right, and, and that's uh, how polyatomic ions come into play with, with naming compounds.